I hate driving a truck in winter, but not just because of the weather. A few hours before I faced my horrible demise. I hate winter, I thought as I drove down the highway. It used to be fun way back when I was a kid and all I had to worry about was if there was enough snow for school to be cancelled. I reminisced about hovering by the radio in my youth. Yes, I'm that old. Waiting for the announcer to name my school in the list of cancellations while looking out the window and silently praying for it to snow even harder. My mom would yell at me to get ready and declare that when she was a kid, the snow had to be piled up to the door before they would cancel school. Wait, they're almost up to our letter, I'd say, knowing they did the listings alphabetically and, if I missed it this time around, it could be another ten minutes of torture wading through songs and commercials until they did the cancellation announcements again. I sighed in despair as they reached my letter and passed it without saying my school's name. I trudged off to get ready, then hurried back, only to have my hopes dashed. If it was a good day, they canceled school early, and I spent the entire day running and playing in the snow with the few neighborhood kids in our little village of fewer than 200 people. I'd come home just when the sun was about to set, exhausted and freezing, but with a smile on my face. This particular day was not a good day. I hopefully listened to the radio one last time as my mom yelled at me to get outside or I would miss the bus. My school had not been named. I trudged outside as the great yellow beast hurtled down the hill and slid to a stop. It usually stopped in front of my house, but today, with the tires fighting against three inches of snow on the road, it slid right past and I had to run to catch it. It wasn't that the plows couldn't keep up. We just lived on a secondary road. Main roads took priority and we got to pass through every once in a while. I stepped up onto the bus, looking at the driver who looked as thrilled as I did to be heading to school, when suddenly the bus lurched forward and slid 30 feet. I fell onto the step but stayed inside the bus. The door hadn't been closed yet and I didn't realize how lucky I had been not to fall out and be run over by the bus's rear wheels. When we finally stopped, the driver looked down at me and asked if I was okay. I told her yes and asked what had happened. She looked in her mirror and said someone must have hit us. She got out and found that a woman had lost control of her car coming down the hill and slid into us. That was my first experience with how dangerous winter driving can be. That's one of the main reasons I hated winter. Why I chose years later to be a truck driver in Pennsylvania, I don't really know. You'd think after nearly being run over by my own bus, I'd learn my lesson. I guess not. These were my thoughts as I drove, trying to finish my run and get home on one of the foggiest nights I'd ever driven in. I'd drawn the short straw and had to take the late run to go pick up parts for the next day. Driving a box truck had its pluses and minuses. I don't have to worry about dragging a trailer around behind me at ungodly speeds, but when the truck is empty, let's just say winter is not its friend. 
Traction can be dodgy with an empty truck. Tonight, I had a different challenge. A week earlier had been the coldest of this winter so far, with an ice storm followed by snow and bitter temperatures. Thankfully, I didn't have to do the long run on any of those days. However, four days after the cold snap, temperatures rose into the 40s and 50s. There was even a little rain. It was beautiful to see all the ice and snow melt off, but it made for ungodly thick fog. You know the expression, the fog was so thick you could cut it with a knife? Well, this fog you couldn't cut with a chainsaw. It stole the light from the afternoon sky, rendering it nearly dark. Even though it was a near impenetrable wall of fog, it had an ethereal quality to it. There were less dense parts that swirled and danced as the barely visible red dots of the car taillights in front of me sliced through it. It was magical, mesmerizing, and extremely dangerous to be lulled by this phenomenon as I drove down the highway, surrounded by other drivers I assumed were fighting to pay attention like I was. My lights were essentially useless. They lit up 20 feet of fog in front of me, and that was it. The light reflected back in my face nearly blinded me if I tried to turn on the high beams. There were no fog lights on my truck. With the cheapskate way the company took care of their trucks, I was lucky the headlights worked. There was no way I was going the speed limit. I had the needle stuck at 35, and even that seemed too fast for the conditions. My hazard lights flashed an eerie red glow in a rhythmic fashion as I crawled my way toward the warehouse in my empty box truck. I wasn't looking forward to the trip back either. It was nearly dark now. I couldn't imagine how bad visibility would be on the return trip. I glanced at the radio to turn the station when a deer flashed in front of me. I stomped on the brakes and swerved to miss it. Thankfully, there wasn't anyone in that lane. Thank God for small faith, I started to say, when something slammed into the side of my truck. The truck tipped on two wheels and before I knew what was happening, I had lost control. I swerved toward the side of the road, narrowly missing a big rig and heading straight for the berm. Usually, there would be a guardrail to stop me or at least slow me down. But this was an older section of road, and it only had the old-style guardrail. A heavy metal wire stretched between posts to prevent drivers from careening over the side. These wires were the reason new guardrails are so much sturdier. I felt the impact as the metal tried to slow me down, but failed. I soared through it, hearing it smack off the side of the truck as it ripped out of the ground. I hoped it wouldn't fling around and smash through the windshield. That would end my trip permanently. I stopped worrying about the heavy metal wire shattering my windshield when my truck took a sudden nosedive over the edge of the road. The fall was fast, but the fog seemed more intense. Tree branches assaulted the windshield and shattered my passenger side window. I stood on the brakes and fought the steering wheel, but it was useless. The tree appeared in front of me a split second before I hit it, destroying the driver's side headlight and folding my hood like a piece of paper. The airbag went off, smacking me in the face and destroying my visibility. I continued to hold on to the useless steering wheel as the truck bounced off the tree and careened sideways. I watched helplessly as another tree headed straight for me. This one took its wrath out on the passenger door and brought the truck to a sudden stop. I was thrown sideways, pain shot through my side as my seatbelt stopped me from ending up a bloody spot on the tree trunk. 
everything except me ended up on the passenger side floor. Things I hadn't seen in years made a sudden reappearance. Fire extinguisher, years worth of old chip bags and candy wrappers, and a bottle of soda that I didn't want to guess how long had been there. I paused and took in a deep breath. Halfway through, pain told me I might have some fractured ribs. The truck was leaning to the side, but not enough that I couldn't unfasten my seatbelt. The pressure on my ribs made me undo it as quickly as possible. I hadn't thought it through, though. As soon as I was free, gravity grabbed me and threw me into the passenger seat. I screamed when I landed on my side, hoping I hadn't caused any more damage. My breath came in ragged gasp as I tried to breathe through the agony. Eventually, I was able to think about anything other than pain and stared out the windshield. One headlight still valiantly fought against the oppressive gloaming, making the heavy fog glow an eerie yellow. I strained my eyes to see anything in front of me, but it was pointless. All that was there were trees. I looked out of the somehow undamaged driver's window and up at the faint flashes of light from the headlights of cars and trucks driving by on the road, oblivious to my fate. It was a steep bank I had tumbled over, probably a hundred feet from the side of the road down to where the wounded truck and I lay. The brush and trees didn't look too bad, and the hill wasn't so steep that I couldn't climb it, under normal circumstances. I looked down at the yellow t-shirt I wore that had a red patch that was getting bigger, and realized it wouldn't be so easy. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone, surprised to find it had received little damage. I thanked God for small favors and called my boss. I told him what had happened and approximately where I thought I was. He was none too happy about the state of the truck, but found solace in the fact that at least I wrecked on the way down when it was empty, rather than on the way back when it would be full of car parts. I'm sure the thought of searching through the underbrush for every little bolting gasket sent shivers down his spine. He said he'd send a tow truck, then hung up. I realized he hadn't even asked if I was injured. I thought about it for a long minute, then began mentally updating my resume. In the meantime, until the tow truck got here, I decided to climb out of my truck and try to make my way back up to the road. With the fog as dense as it was, I was sure the tow truck would have a hard time finding me. I started for the driver's door when my blood turned to ice. I'd glanced out the windshield into the gloaming fog and saw something big slowly coming toward the truck. It was only a shadow lit by the flashing red lights which made it even eerier to see it glow red, as some massive, demon-looking creature emerged from the pits of hell come to devour my soul. It stood upright, and the lights reflected in its eyes, making them shine red. It was heading for the truck when its eyes locked on mine. It paused, and I found a new definition of fear as the teeth grew into a smile. They also shone red, but I couldn't decide if that was because of the lights, or if it had recently gorged on some living thing. I wondered if the deer it had been chasing was still alive. Its slow approach was unnerving. Its form was only half visible as my eyes fought the darkness and fog. As it drew closer, I could see claws on the ends of its hands, and the general shape was that 
of a massive dog walking on two legs. But it was bigger than any dog I'd ever seen. It stood at least seven feet tall as the one remaining headlight struggled to illuminate its its inhuman form. It was almost to the truck. My mind ran through a list of options, but none of them ended with me living through it. So I dove to the passenger side floor as quietly as possible. I focused on breathing silently. Even though my ribs were screaming, I covered my mouth and breathed only as little as necessary. I listened intently as the thing approached. I could hear its breath chugging like a steam engine sitting idle at the station waiting for a trip to begin. I could smell the stench of death creep over the dashboard as a set of claws reached through the hole in the shattered windshield. I fought to stay as still and quiet as humanly possible as I heard it sniffing the air, searching for me. Liquid dripped from its claws onto my pants. I looked and saw it was dark red. The snout was just visible through the opening. I knew there wasn't much time before the rest of the head would make its horrible appearance and look around the inside of the ruined truck. Once it did, my life would be over. A second claw appeared and clamped on the dash as I felt the creature crawling up the front of the truck. It was only seconds now until it found me. I thought of the things I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Write a book. Find a, a better job. Maybe even live until the weekend and have a barbecue. None of those seemed likely now. The creature was almost inside. The stench was horrible, and yet I sat, curled up in a painful ball on the floor in front of the passenger seat, sitting in the detritus of years of driving, praying that my life wasn't about to end in violent, gory fashion. Suddenly, the truck lurched sideways with the additional weight on the hood. The creature paused. Ever so slowly, the truck began to slide backward, away from the tree holding it in place. I heard the screech of metal of the passenger door scraping against the tree holding it. The truck slid backward. I grabbed onto the passenger seat to brace myself as the truck slammed to a stop, hitting another tree. The creature seemed to sense the danger and leaped out of the truck to keep from going along on a deadly ride down the rest of the hill. I breathed a sigh of relief, but it was short-lived as the truck slid further down the hill. I stayed where I was, hoping it was the safest place in the truck if it slid further. Hopelessness overwhelmed me as I waited to see if the truck would continue its slide having no idea how far the bottom of the hill was, or if there was a sheer drop in my future. For the moment, it almost made me forget there was a demonic-looking creature still out there, lurking, hunting me. I didn't dare move from my spot, even if the truck was stable. I was sure it hadn't lost interest, and I wasn't about to pop my head out of the window and serve myself up as a snack. Turned out, I didn't have to wait long. As I looked out the driver's side window, I saw the creature peering in. We locked eyes. It opened its massive jaws full of sharp teeth, some of which were still red from its last kill. It hissed at me, spraying me with whatever vile fluid was in its mouth before advancing. It dove through the window and slashed at me with its claws. 
I covered my face with my arms. It slashed at me, tearing at my arms and making me scream in pain. Agony covered me in a blanket as I pulled into a tighter ball, trying to protect myself. But it was useless. Blood was already pouring from my arms and it was trying to pull them away from my face to aim a killing blow at my neck. In desperation, I did the only thing I had left to do. I reached up and pulled on the door latch. Thankfully, it opened, surprising both me and the creature. I fell backward out into the brush, tearing at my face and chest. But I was free for the moment. I quickly recovered and crawled underneath it, trying to escape. I crawled uphill, hoping to escape out the other side, but had overestimated the height of the truck and found myself trapped underneath. The brush had been compressed as the truck slid, and I found I had nowhere to go. Despair whispered sweet nothings in my ear as I realized my only escape route would take me into the waiting arms of the creature determined to dine on my entrails. As I lay there, curled in a ball, watching my arms bleed, I felt cold. I wasn't sure if it was the adrenaline wearing off or just being outside. The temperature had been unseasonably warm lately, but it was still only in the 50s. The mystery was solved when I turned and saw I was laying in a patch of snow. The hillside must not have gotten much sun, and it seemed this patch of snow had held out against the unseasonable warm. Lucky me. I was laying right in the middle of it, with nowhere else to go without alerting the creature to my presence. So, now I had the misfortune of yet another way of dying. The list seemed to be growing by the minute, aside from being dismembered by some horrible creature, or crushed if the truck decided to shift its weight again. I could freeze to death, or just simply bleed out. My chances were getting slimmer. I wasn't sure if even Vegas odds makers would give me odds of making it out of this alive. My head was on a swivel, looking in every direction, watching for any movement. Unfortunately, I could only see the way I came, in a small sliver near the front of the truck. The rest was a tangle of brush that was too dense to see through. The constant was the fog. It crept under the truck and sidled up to me, caressing me with its icy kiss. My eyelids felt like they weighed a thousand pounds. I knew I couldn't fall asleep. But the enormity of the situation was crashing down on me, and my mind was shutting down. My exhaustion dragged me down into the abyss of unconsciousness, and I wanted nothing more than to allow myself to be taken away, close my eyes, and wake up at home in my bed, free of this nightmare. As my brain convinced me this was just an illusion, I saw movement. My eyes tried to focus on it and track it, but my, my brain wasn't making any sense. It seemed there were two creatures now. One was at the front of the truck, and one had climbed inside. I felt the truck move and saw the undercarriage moving up and down inches from my face as the second creature did whatever it was doing inside the truck. I knew it wouldn't be long until it discovered my hiding place. I fought to keep my eyes open. If this thing was going to get me, I wanted to fight it off with my last breath. But my traitorous eyes refused to stay open. The last thing I felt was a pull on my legs. It had found me and was pulling me from under the truck. I had no resistance left to give. My fleeting thought was, I hope it kills me quickly instead of eating me alive. I awoke to darkness. 
it seemed warm for a creature's den. But then maybe it had a fire going, and I was about to be the guest of honor at a barbecue. I opened my eyes and looked around. There was a nightlight in the wall. That seemed very odd for a creature's den. I looked down at myself and was surprised to find I was covered with a blanket and laying in a hospital bed. There was a tube going in my arm and a machine with glowing numbers beside my bed. Both my arms were bandaged, and my head felt like it was on fire. I tried to put together how I got here, but my memory failed me. Just then, a nurse walked in. How are we feeling today? She said. Confused, I said. Where am I? How did I get here? You're in the hospital, and the police brought you in. When? Last night, around nine. How bad? I said, lifting my arms. Ooh, lots of cuts and scratches, some of them pretty deep, she said. You'll need to be bandaged for a while, but other than that, you lost some blood. We gave you some, and you've been recovering ever since. When can I go home? I'm not sure, she said. There's an officer outside who wanted to ask you some questions. Am I in trouble? She shrugged, then stepped out of the room as the officer came in. How are you doing? He said. Okay, I guess. Were you the one who brought me here? Yes, I pulled you from under the truck, he said, pulling out a notepad and pen. Why exactly were you under the truck? I was being chased. By what? I opened my mouth to tell the truth. But my brain screamed at me, whatever you do, do not tell him about the creature. It was some kind of animal. Do you know what kind? He said, making notes. The kind that crawls into the truck and tries to rip your face off, I said, holding up my arms. I crawled under the truck to get away from it. I see, he said, writing on his pad. Your talk screen came back negative. You hadn't been drinking or anything else according to your blood work. What made you drive off the road like that? I thought about it for a long moment as his eyes bored expectantly into mine. I swerved to miss a deer. His pen stopped moving. You swerved to miss a deer? I nodded. Nothing else? I shook my head. He stared at me, blankly. And you have no idea what kind of animal attacked you? No, sir, I said, looking at the bandages on my arms. He closed his notepad and stuck his pen in his pocket. I hope you get better soon, he said, standing and heading toward the door. He paused in the doorway and looked back. If you think of anything else I might need to know, just call the station. I opened my mouth, then closed it and nodded. I'd like to say I found a better job. I'd like to say I'm not driving truck anymore, especially on that stretch of road. Both of those things would be untrue. I knew better than to tell my boss anything more than I told the officer. It sounded good to say I wrote this to warn others of the danger, but the truth is, I just had to tell someone about how I get cold sweats every time I go near the stretch of road where I had the accident, especially when I go past the spot where they still haven't fixed the guardrail. I'd love to say that I never see a set of eyes watching me from the side of the road when I drive by, but that's not true. I'm waiting for the day it jumps out in front of me again. This time, I won't swerve. Thank you.